It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Your emails as well at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. Well, here we go. Gavin Newsom is on some kind of press conference tour on Sunday. He was in Hollywood to talk about his expansion of the California film and television tax credit to $750 million, trying to compete with states like New York and Georgia might be helpful. Some say it's too little too late. Yesterday, Gavin Newsom made a trip to the border and then had a Zoom press conference with tons of technical difficulties on the successes of the CHP's retail task forces. And although that press conference turned into kind of a depressing mess for him because every question was about What's the deal with you not liking Prop 36 and everyone wants Prop 36? It's got 73% support. Now we come to day three of Gavin Newsom's Hey, Nobody's Paying Attention to Me press conference tour. Gavin Newsom this time went to Skid Row. He went to Los Angeles and he was joined by Hilda Solis and Catherine Barger and Karen Bass to give us even more money to solve the homeless problem. Accountability, accountability, accountability. Oh, and there's going to be a lot of accountability. Now, I have cut some select clips from this presser. We're going to get to all of them. I'm so glad you've joined us here today. Let's start off with the opening act, which happens to be L.A. County Supervisor Hilda Solis. Quite frankly. Hilda starts off by doing what these press conferences are always full of, making sure you get as many ass kisses as you can get in for the governor. Thank you so much. And a special shout out to Governor Gavin Newsom. Thank you for inviting me here this afternoon. And thank you. And by the way, you need to have this in context. It was just what a little more than a month ago where Gavin Newsom was in the black t-shirt showing off the biceps on the side of the freeway, cleaning up a homeless encampment, going after the LA County board of supervisors saying they're the ones that are not doing what I'm telling them to do. They're the ones that are not listening to my executive order on clearing homeless encampments. I guess everybody made nice because uh, nothing really came of all those threats. And thank you for all our partners, uh, Mayor Bass, and to all the elected officials, and especially our partners. And today we're, uh, as you know, unveiling, through the governor's efforts, $97 million that will be made available through the Homeless Housing Assistance Prevention Funds to Los Angeles County. But that's in addition to so much more that he has done. He's done so much for us. He keeps throwing us, showering us with money. Daddy Gavin's making it rain in L.A., which is great because we could use the rain. Hilda then, of course, throws to Karen Bass, the mayor of Los Angeles. The governor has really shown us clear how important it is to collaborate in this partnership with our cities, with our local cogs and with all of our partners, including. I'm pretty sure he was openly threatening most of the board of supervisors under the freeway. But sure, now everyone's locking arms, Karen Bass style. Mayor Bass. And with that, I am pleased and honored to welcome my friend, the mayor of Los Angeles, Mayor Karen Bass. Thank you. Who wooed that? Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Supervisor Solis. And I Does this sound like a press conference to talk about the intractable problem of homelessness, or does this sound like an award speech? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Supervisor Solis, and I also want to thank our other partner on the Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Barger. Thank you so much for being here today. I'd like to thank my agent and, of course, my management team. Oh, and the kids that are watching at home. Yeah, I did it. I made it. Now, there was an interesting nugget in the press conference outside of everyone telling Gavin what a great job he's doing. Keep that faucet of money coming. Because Karen Bass talked about some of the changes in state law that she personally advocated for through the legislature. And one of them was pretty interesting to me, pretty eye opening, because it's something that I heard about a couple of months ago that I couldn't believe was real. 
Let's hear what Mayor Bass had to say. As we've gone about this work, we know that the system is complex. We know that there's many areas of dysfunction. And one of the historic areas of dysfunction was bickering and finger pointing between different levels of government. I mean, that's not going away. Gavin was literally doing that a couple weeks ago. But this is an example, what you see today, of work that we have been doing for the last couple of years, which is bringing every level of government together. And let me just especially thank our government. And I will say, even though Karen Bass deservedly gets a lot of flack because this problem is not getting nearly as much, is not improving nearly as quick enough as we thought it would, there's some legitimate things that she has talked about that I can't believe took us this long to get here, but if we're starting to fix it, that's great. One of the things has to do with these nonsensical caps that we have on trying to house our homeless veterans, where if you get veterans benefits because you served your country, you somehow make too much money to qualify for housing, even if you are homeless. And I think everyone in this audience would argue the first people that we should be housing are the people that literally put their lives on the line for us. So she got the federal government to put waivers out. And so we can start getting rid of these nonsensical bureaucratic hurdles that included not letting people move into tiny homes at the VA, the land that was built for them. And this doesn't have to do anything with Karen Bass, but I am totally in agreement with that Judge Carter that has said, hey, you know what, VA? You don't get to lease out the land that was built for the veterans to UCLA for the baseball field. You don't get to lease it out to the private school. You got to cancel those leases and you got to build housing on there right now because that's what that land was for. I love that. And let me just especially thank our governor who has been a terrific partner. Oh, here we go. It's time for more ass kissing. And let me just especially thank our governor who has been a terrific partner, not just in terms of the resources. And thank you for those resources. But also, I mean, you do got to kiss the ring if you want the money to keep coming. I get it. I mean, we're all nice to our bosses. They sign our checks. But also part of the complexity that we have to deal with are regulations, administrative uh, policies, as well as state legislation that either contribute to putting people on the street or make it so difficult to get people off the street. You signed a number of bills this session, several of them we put forward, bills that we identified would resolve barriers, one of which related to RVs. So you could take an RV off the street, but then you're forced to kind of put it back on the street because you have to immediately auction it. Okay, That is massive. That is a game changer. And I got to say, this is one of the issues of having a full-time legislature that passes a thousand bills every year. I consider myself pretty darn dialed in. I try to 100% focus on local and state politics. I know about this specific issue, which I'll get into. I didn't know there was a bill to do this. I didn't know Karen Bass helped introduce a bill to do this. This is a massive thing. So if this did get signed by Gavin and goes into effect, I guess, in January, this is going to stop the RV recycling that is going on out there that makes no sense to anybody. So I got turned on to this when I was listening to, as my geeky self does, an L.A. City Council Transportation Committee hearing, which, as you know, are the most interesting meetings because transportation involves all intersections of life. It involves public safety. It involves homelessness. It involves so many other things because Department of Transportation are the people that need to tow the RVs. So they had this press conference. They they had this meeting where they had LAPD and DOT and everyone to explain why is it so difficult to get rid of the RV encampments, especially when, as you know, a lot of these RVs The people that are living in them don't even own them. They're renting them from the so-called van lords. Well, here's what was happening. Let's say you have a derelict RV. It might be leaking motor oil. It might be used as a chop shop. It's not even operable. Who knows what they're doing with the septic tank? And you are blocking the right of way. You are illegally parked. Let's say that LAPD finally says, all right, you know what? Currently, the system, the way it is, is DOT has to ticket you at least five times before they can tow you. So let's say they've ticketed you five times, and then they're going to tow you. 
What do they do next? Well, they take your RV or the RV you were living in to the LAPD impound. And if the LAPD impound garage is full, well, it is. And here's the issue. The existing law that I assume was changed right here was such as even if you're confiscating a disgusting derelict RV, if it happens to be worth more than $500, which you could argue any RV with the parts inside, the catalytic converter itself is going to be worth more than $500. The existing law said, well, you have to go put that on an auction. You need to have the traditional you know, lean process. You have to put it out for auction. You can't just destroy it. You can't just crush it into a cube. I don't know why that was the law. So here's what was happening. So LAPD would have to go through the lean system. They couldn't actually dispose of the RV. The garages were full because there's very little space for these oversized vehicles. So what would end up happening to clear up space is they would auction the RVs that were already towed from homeless encampments back out onto the street for as little as $50 a pop. So if you're wondering how did this profession of van lord even become a thing, You have people that attend police auctions. They buy 10 RVs, 50 bucks a pop, $500 gets them 10 RVs. They rent them out to the homeless, the unhoused, the working poor, whoever it is for what, four or $500 a month, which is way cheaper than rent anywhere else. But of course, they're not going to give you the types of services or the comfort that you would expect from living in an actual home. And if that thing gets towed away, you get it back from auction for another $50 or you get another one. So we weren't destroying any of the RVs. We weren't crushing them into cubes, even though that seemed like the logical way to do this. The only way that would happen is a program that we were testing out in the city where you would pay somebody who, if they owned their RV, you'd pay them like $1,000 to accept housing, buy the RV from them, then we could get rid of it. But if we confiscated it, we had to auction it off. And that made no sense. So I'm going to tell you right here, as somebody that has a lot of criticism for Gavin Newsom and criticism for Karen Bass, if that is something, and I got to do my research, because again, I'm hearing about this for the very first time, and I follow this subject all the time. But if we have actually gotten to the point where the legislature passed a bill and Gavin Newsom signed it into law that come January, if we confiscate a derelict RV, we don't have to auction it off and we can cut off the recycling cycle of RVs, that is a very good thing of which related to RVs. So you could take an RV off the street, but then you're forced to kind of put it back on the street because you have to immediately auction it. I'm going to try to do as much research as I can just in the commercial break because I need to know that that was a thing. I'm hoping she's talking about something that was just passed and not something that we're going to pass in the next session because the fact that it's that hard to get rid of an RV made no sense. The fact that veterans... Qual- didn't qualify for assistance like housing because their veterans' benefits was too much income. I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. Veterans' benefits, Social Security, should not be counted as income for any social program. That doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to look into that. Now, Karen Bass, she got her spiel out. It's time to make it for the big man. Thank you very much. And let me now, of course, bring up the man of the hour. This is nice to invite you to the podium for the second time in a couple of days to make a very important announcement for our region. Governor Newsom. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor. Hey, did you notice that Karen Bass got a woo and Gavin did not get a woo? What's up with that? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Well, thank you all uh, for being here. Thank you to all the speakers for all your hard work. Uh, Thank you uh, for uh, contributing to demonstrable success as it relates to unsheltered homeless here in Los Angeles. I mean, define demonstrable success. Homelessness did go down 10% in the city of Los Angeles, but the countywide, the number only went down 200. So 
Success is relative, I guess. We got a lot of sound from Gavin, including questions that he got, including from Alex Michelson asking, what do you say to all the Californians that think you wasted $25 billion? We'll get into all of that and we'll take your phone calls. 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. I'm going to go look up that RV bill. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. Well, I took my little fingers and I did my research and turns out there was a bill, but it's not nearly as exciting as Karen Bass was selling it. Gavin Newsom signed Rick Chavez Burr's AB2525, which was sponsored by Karen Bass. It is supposed to move RVs out of neighborhoods, bring more unhoused Angelinos inside by... Allowing the city to lease property from Caltrans at a reduced rate to store the RVs. So we're not destroying the RVs, but we're not going to put them in overcrowded police garages where they get out on auction. But we're going to store them on Caltrans land like, I don't know, the lots that are under freeways and these things are fire hazards. I don't know about all that. It's a small, tiny step in the right direction. Ultimately, the important thing is that we stop auctioning off the homeless RVs, but I don't understand why we can't just destroy them. (laughs) I really don't, especially if it's a van lord situation, because the van lord is operating an illegal business. So there's a crime there. Hey, let's go to the phones. Mike in L.A. Mike, hello. Hi. I'm talking about the city and... um they're taking away the um, picketing of, you know, cars as well for parking too long or whatever, and also motorhomes and all vehicles. They st- said they were going to stop it because of low-income people were being affected so much. But wait a minute. That law was put into effect like 20 years or 30 years ago. That money that the city was collecting was paying bills for something. And now we're just going to erase it. Where are they going to get the money to pay for the things that they used to use that money for? That's my question. It doesn't seem like they think of end game ever. It's all, uh, we're going to do this. And they never talk about uh, the end game. How are they going to stop giving stuff away once they start it? That's my question. It seems like Los Angeles politics truly is the law of unintended consequences and a lack of critical thinking. And you make a really good point, Mike. Thank you so much for the call. Appreciate it. Let's go to Morris in North Hollywood. Morris, hello. Yes, uh, good afternoon. I am a vendor for several of the towing contractors for LAPD, OBG, for example, Central Division 1 and 2, Southwest Division. At any rate, uh, the the lots, the tow yards are overloaded with these old beater motorhomes. First of all, when they're impounded, there's a thirty usually a thirty day hold on the uh, motorhomes. Then they have to file for a lien sale with Department Motor Vehicles to obtain title. And by the time they're through with the sale of those motorhomes, is junk, so they lose their shirt. So these tow yards do not want these old pieces of junk. So the city of Los Angeles is actually paying them for storage. Second of all, as long as someone lives in that motorhome, that is their principal resident, and they're inside that motorhome, you generally cannot tow it on the spot. And that's a big problem with that. And unless these laws change, uh, it's the way the system is set up today. And nothing for nothing was done about this. It's like a disease that's not cured. It's over. It's out of sight, out of hand, and whatever goes, goes. And uh, it's become horrible. But what can we do about it? And the tow yards, well, like I said, don't want these uh, old pieces of junk. I mean, no, they lose their Of course they don't. Towing them. They, they take up so they much lose- space. And when we have the garages that are overcrowded, the police don't want to deal with them. So we, everyone, it's a case of hot potato. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Let's auction it back into society. Yeah, Central Division, LEPD, uh, has their auction every Tuesday. And they auctioned one off for $25. It was partially wrecked, and they didn't. nobody wanted it. 
All right. And by law, they can't junk it like that. There's a, they have to wait for the lien sale for a title to come through before they can even junk it. And uh, it is a mess. I mean, uh, those junker motorhomes is literally junk for the most part. Windows are missing. Is uh, the side panels are missing. They're all busted up. And uh, the tow yards don't want it. The drivers uh, don't even want to pick them up. That's how bad it is. And uh, it's hard for the, uh, I guess, the homeowner where they're parked at uh, on the streets. Don't to understand what the system is. It's wrong. But it is what it is. You can't do anything about it. No, we're going to have to change a lot more laws than the one that Rick Chavez Burr just wrote. Thanks so much for the call, Morris. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate the insight. There's a lot we got to do there. Maybe we need a separate classification if it is a vehicle that is being used as a dwelling. But to go through all the nonsense that we go through with title, when the person who is renting the RV doesn't even own it, the person who owns it bought it at auction, there is got to be a way to get through these loopholes maybe this will help if we have more spaces to keep the rvs because we can't get rid of them but boy would i love to crush them it also has me thinking that if this was the old days of radio stations doing stunts i would go buy one of those 25 dollars rvs and i would put the kabc logo on it and i would put it in a place where a lot of people were going to see it but uh you know it's 2024. We don't do that crap anymore. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC. 1-800-222-5222. Your emails as well at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. We're going through Gavin Newsom and Karen Bass's press conference this morning to spend even more money on the homeless crisis. And we're also trying to figure out how do we get rid of these RVs? Because even the laws that were just signed that were supposed to help this problem aren't going to help that much. Let's go to Phil in Long Beach. Phil, hello. So if we have all these public officials that are telling us to use public transportation, that means their parking lots aren't going to be as full of cars. Let us park those RVs in the county and city parking lots where the officials park. They'll take public transportation, and when they get tired of it, then they'll create laws to get rid of this crap. That is a brilliant idea. I love it. I think we should get into that right now if the RVs can fit in that parking garage at City Hall East. Well, why not? Why not? They have a lot of open parking spaces all around City Hall, around MacArthur Park. That's all city parking. Let them use that. They want I think we should do that. I think they this. should give up their parking spaces first before this problem gets solved. And you totally make a great point. The people that are advocating so hard for public transit, they don't use it. Let them use it. I think that's, that's great. Phil, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate it. 800-222-KABC is the phone number. Let's get into Gavin Newsom's speech this morning at Skid Row. Uh, we uh, are seeing progress in many parts of the state, and we're seeing uh, stubborn uh, uh, issues in other parts of our state. No one is naive uh, about the challenge of this issue. No one is naive about uh, the public's perception of our progress in this state. No one, uh, because there really hasn't been that much of it again, big accomplishment. Karen Bass got a 10% reduction in the city. The County of Los Angeles, which the city is in did not see a 10% reduction. They saw a reduction of 200, which is a rounding error. So I don't know what to believe, uh, is denying, uh, how angry people are, how frustrated they are. And how heartbroken they are. I was just reminded, quite literally, just driving in at a stop sign and uh, two beautiful young kids, uh, no older than my, my kids, with backpacks on their way to school, seeing things that they can't unsee, uh, see things that they shouldn't see in terms of those that are struggling. I wonder what they saw uh, out on the streets and sidewalks. So no one is naive uh, about the challenges that we face, not just here 
in Los Angeles, but throughout the state of California. When Gavin Newsom likes a phrase, he really likes a phrase, and he uses it over and over and over again. I counted three naives in that 55-second tape. Now let's move on to one of his other favorite words, accountability. Since then, we have significantly increased the investments, but we've also increased the accountability, transparency, and the expectations. And so where's the accountability been for the last 10 years? Advance today uh, for your consideration as we announce the distribution of $827 million to 37 jurisdictions throughout the state of California, including not just L.A. City and L.A. County, $160 million to the city, what, $97 million uh, to the county. I thought we were broke. But also to the CACs that include Pasadena, include Long Beach, and include Glendale. A regional framework where there was a memorandum of understanding, a contract that was established and formed before the application was turned in. An expectation of roles and responsibility and relationships between the city and counties, these larger COCs and the smaller COCs. A framework of expectation and reporting that would no longer be put at a quarterly or biannual basis, but at a monthly basis. An expectation. We're going to have monthly reports of how successful these programs are not being? Wow! That the rules and regulations that are well established in contract templates throughout this state as it relates to being in compliance with state rules, housing rules, particularly housing element, that they were component parts of the renewed expectation. A different framework of engagement at all levels of government. That's exactly what the mayor was just expressing. It's exactly what the supervisor was just expressing. That the same supervisor that you were yelling at a month ago because they refused to enforce your executive order on clearing homeless encampments? A- and Karen Bass did too, but he's not going to pick a fight with Karen Bass. And he's not going to pick a fight with either of them to their face. A need and desire to move away from the finger pointing and the jaw boning to relationship of accountability. Everybody is accountable. No one should be immune to any accountability. Accountability, accountability, accountability. I think I counted five in that minute 49 tape. Accountability, accountability, accountability. We'll keep going as when we come back, Gavin Newsom goes after Norwalk and Huntington Beach and something happens that is so perfectly Los Angeles at this press conference at Skid Row as Gavin Newsom spending even more money to fix the problem. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC as we go through Gavin Newsom and Karen Bass's press conference to spend even more money on the homeless crisis. Let's go to Bill and La Cunada. Bill, hello. Hey, Randy, do you think we could get everybody to agree that we did not have 75,000 homeless people after before 2014, before Prop 47 and 57. Can, do you think people would agree about that? I, some people would. Gavin Newsom claims there were more homeless people under Schwarzenegger. Well, I, I was around then. I know you were too. I don't remember anything like that. And and it certainly wasn't the case that that in latest in the latest surveys, eighty five percent of them are drug addicts, and something like seventy five percent of those are from other countries and other states. So I have no obligation to be accountable to these people for anything. And as a matter of fact, I, I would like to challenge uh, Gavin the gas bag to go on your program, and I'd love to call in and ask him where he gets his mathematical analysis. Maybe he get, he takes lessons from Heather Hutt on the city council. I don't know. But I figured that if you took uh, 75% of these, uh, or 85% of these 75,000 uh, hardcore drug addicts and put them in prison for a year, it would cost $3.4 billion. Most of them probably might stay there two years if they needed. That'd be $7 billion. He's spent $25 billion, $24 billion at least since 2017. Why is it? does he keep claiming that we don't have the money to incarcerate people? And I don't care if they don't like being incarcerated. I think you make a strong point, although I don't think Gavin's coming on the show. But I'll try. Thanks for the call, Bill. Appreciate it. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. Let's get to the part of a Gavin Newsom presser that we've all been waiting for when he trashes cities like Huntington Beach. 
And Norwalk. And what we refer to as HCD, they do grants. They do them well. They're approximate. They're adjacent. They're accountable to this new housing accountability unit where we just brought in homelessness into the accountability frame. Therein lies the why Norwalk. They were the first as it relates to that framework of accountability. So Gavin doesn't have any accountability for the $25 billion we've spent, but he's going to hold Norwalk accountable because their city council voted to no longer zone homeless shelters as well as payday loan shops. As was Huntington Beach, as it relates to being the first, as it relates to the housing accountability. He is suing Huntington Beach because he sees that they're not building enough affordable housing. In order... Huntington Beach says, uh, we're pretty full, buddy. In order not just to incentivize good behavior, but to disincentivize bad behavior. And I say this with love and admiration as a former supervisor and mayor. It's not the state's job to realize the state's vision. What? The state's job. It's not the state's job to realize the state's vision. I come up with the big idea. I'm the big picture guy. You're the day-to-day people. You go do what I tell you to do. The state vision is realized locally. Localism is determinative. There it it is. is bottom up, not top down. And that No, what you're literally describing is top down cuz you're giving out the orders and then you get pissed when it doesn't go out because you're not the one on the ground except when you clean up a homeless encampment. Down. And that's incredibly important. The state's role and responsibility is to support those efforts to clear all of those hurdles and all of the challenges. And that's what the mayor was just referring to in a number of efforts that she initiated and sponsored that we enthusiastically supported and to continue to iterate in the spirit that defines the crisis at hand. And that's the final point I want to make. Was not his final point. Gavin will say final point about seven times before he wraps up. He is very long winded. Now, There's something that happens at press conferences in Los Angeles. Usually this happens outdoors, but if you happen to be at a women's homeless shelter on Skid Row, chances are at some point your speech is going to get drowned out by a siren. That's the broad strokes of of what we're advancing here today. And final point when we open up to questions. Uh, This is the fifth round of HAP funding. You can hear it. The sixth round was approved just in June. That's money that will come later, another billion dollars of investment that we will make. The sixth round has even higher levels of requirements and accountability. And we're going to be talking a lot more about that before those dollars go out as well. So we're starting to scale. I did not doctor that. That is real. That is raw. It's the soundtrack to Southern California. Now, let's get into a question in the question and answer portion of this presser. Alex Michelson has an obvious one. Hi, Governor. Alex Michelson, Fox 11 News. You know, there's a lot of people that look around these streets and are very frustrated. I know you're very frustrated as well. And they see all the spending, $24 billion in spending, and the problem's gotten worse. Is this really about spending more money, or does something else have to change? Uh, I, and, and, do, and, and what do you say to people who don't trust that the money will be spent well? well I love it. Great question. I'm sure this is going to get covered on the issue is. Well, I hope they'll take a look at the specific proposals and what we've outlined here today. I think we've answered a lot of those concerns as it relates to transparency and accountability as it relates to. I'm going to be accountable now. We weren't accountable before, but now I say accountability every other word. So we're accountable. That accountability manifesting in real action by the state of California. Uh, You can talk not just to the two cities that I recognize as it relates to uh, some of our legal actions, but those that we've settled with. So in the answer, how does you know the money's going to get spent well? Well, we're suing Norwalk. Uh, Some of our legal actions, but those that we've settled with all up and down the state, we mean business in a very different way than we have in the past. The fact is, as the mayor said, and I applaud her and I applaud the county, you saw a reduction here. You did. You saw a reduction in unsheltered homeless. 10% in the city. It was under 200 down in the county. So maybe those people just went outside the city border. I don't know. And that's got to be our... We do everything. No one's naive. But we have to address the conditions on the sidewalks with laser focus and prioritization. These encampments and tents. People are dying and suffering on our watch. 
There's nothing humane about stepping over people in the streets and sidewalks. And the last time Gavin had a speech like this, he was on the side of the road cleaning up a homeless encampment and going after L.A. County for not going through with his executive order. But I guess it's time to make nice. So that's where we're going to be really reinforcing our energies and prioritization at the same time, as I noted, you've got to address the underlying issue in the first place. But look, let's move on to the next question, because it specifically had to do with the fact that Gavin was just going after the county a few weeks ago. Hi, Governor. Melanie Mason with Politico. You were here a couple months ago um, and spoke about how, in particular, the counties were addressing the homelessness crisis. And you were quite critical. In fact, you said it was an indictment on how the counties were addressing this problem. Is that still your assessment today? And as a follow up, what is your position on the L.A. County Measure A? Yeah, he's not going to answer that part. I think we can all do a lot better. City, counties, state, regional partners. I think the federal government can do a lot better as well in this place. I stand by what I said. Uh, a, a few months ago, and I'm proud to stand. This is super awkward here because Hilda Solis is standing right next to him. And I'm proud to stand with the two outstanding supervisors uh, that in the spirit uh, of what was expressed. Now, to be fair to Barger, Barger wanted to enforce Gavin's executive order. It was Holly and Horvath that said, hell no. Uh, and Hilda. Uh, have stepped up and supported this renewed partnership and have embraced Uh, the framework of this new partnership. Uh, They wouldn't be here otherwise, so I applaud them for that. Well, they're here for the money. As it relates to... They're not here for you. They're here for the check. As it relates to local measures, I haven't weighed in on any of them. Uh, I represent a state the size of 21 state populations combined. I'm too big to know what Measure A is or how I would weigh in on it. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how many local initiatives I have been asked to weigh in on. I simply don't have the bandwidth or capacity. I trust your local leaders uh, and I trust your voters to make the right decision. Hello, Governor. This is Raj Vora. Being an Angelino, I feel like I'm in a double engine and I wanted to compliment you, Mayor and Supervisor, for a wonderful job. My question related to homelessness, can we do the big warehouse type setting where at the same time a lot of people can be moved in temporarily at the same time but clear much faster and then later on when more housing comes up and acquire they can be moved there i don't know who this guy is but i love the question can we get a big warehouse for all the homeless so our priority we have a pro housing framework pro housing housing first i know this can be um Point of discussion for yeah, he's not going to answer that one. Interesting question, though. Thank you all so much for listening. It's always a blast doing this, and thanks for doing this instead of the Dodgers. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC.